Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be covering rendering using the movie render queue in Unreal Engine 5. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be starting with a sequence that I already assembled with nested subsequences for individual shots. If you would like to learn more about how to do this, as well as other ways to use Unreal Engine as a filmmaking tool, Check out my online course, Making a Film in Unreal Engine 5. It covers the full process, all the way from gathering reference to exporting your finished film. This course has everything you need to get up and running without any prior experience. Check out the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and render out this sequence. To do this, we are gonna come up to the window menu, go to Cinematics, and choose Movie Render Queue. You should get this window popping up. We're going to hit the render button to add a sequence to the queue, which in this case is our master sequence. On the right here, you should see the name of the sequence and the name of the map. And then if we expand the sequence here, we can see all those sub sequences that we recorded and assembled into our master. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the unsaved config button here under the settings area. Here's where you can add and remove render settings, switch them on and off with these little toggles. And this is where we're going to be able to tell Unreal Engine the exact way to render out our sequence. So to add a render setting, I'm going to come up here to the render plus button. Here we have a bunch of options. We have our standard settings up here at the top. We also have output settings underneath and a bunch of other more specialized settings at the bottom, which we won't get into. I'm going to choose the .exr sequence as an option, and this will tell Unreal Engine that we are going to be rendering out EXR sequences, which are the highest quality images that we can render out of Unreal Engine. I'm going to uncheck the .jpeg sequence option here, and the compression I'm going to go ahead and leave as PIZ, but you can always change it here on the right side. The thing that we always should add to all of our renders is the anti-aliasing settings. This is what's going to tell Unreal Engine to render at a higher quality than what you would see in the viewport while you're working. So the first thing we're going to do is check on override anti-aliasing. And right here we have two options here that we're going to need to adjust. We have spatial sample count and temporal sample count. I'm going to make the spatial sample count five and the temporal sample count five as well. Spatial sample count has to do with the overall quality of the image, how many times it iterates on a particular image. And temporal sample count can help with moving objects, motion blur, sparkling kind of effects, shimmering edges. This can kind of be helped with temporal sample count. So you're going to need to test these settings. These are probably on the low end right now if we use four and five, and you'll need to just gradually increase them as you test each individual shot that you render out. Let's go to our output settings. We can choose our output directory, which by default is in the folder for your project that Unreal Engine has created under saved and then movie renders. For the file name output, we are gonna adjust this slightly. And the reason for this is because we have a master sequence but we have multiple sequences within that master sequence that we actually want to export as separate shots. And this is so that when we render it into our editing software, we can actually continue to edit and update the cuts between the shots without making adjustments to one enormously long clip. If you only have one sequence, you don't have to do this. So I'm going to add a modifier to the middle here. So right after the period, I'm going to put a curly bracket and then I'm going to type in shot underscore name and then close the bracket and then add an additional period after it. This is going to render the entire sequence together, but in the naming, it will separate each shot so we can read them separately later. Under the output resolution, we are actually going to render out at 4K. So I'm going to type in this first number as 3840 and the second number as 2160. Finally, I am going to check on use custom frame rate here just to be absolutely sure that we are rendering out at 30 frames per second, which is what we have in our timeline. If you're using 24 frames per second, go ahead and add that. So now that we have set up our settings as we like them, we don't want to actually come back and have to reset up these values every time you want to render a new version. So we're going to save what we've done here as a preset. Let's go ahead and call it 4K render settings. 
and it can be found under the movie pipeline folder under presets. So now that that is saved, I can find it here later if I need to do another render and it will have all of these values that I've entered. So let's go and hit accept and now we are ready to hit render local. Once you hit render local, it will start to output the images. You should get a render preview window here, which is going to display a lower quality version of your render as it works on it. And it's a quick way to double check if you are rendering everything correctly. So at the bottom left corner here, we have the name of the sequence that we're rendering and the total frames, as well as the cut and scene name. We also have the estimated remaining time, which is super useful. So it's telling me that I have about an hour left before I finish rendering the whole sequence. And here we have also the sub sample, which is directly affected by the temporal and spatial sample count that we added into our render settings. And as it's rendering, it'll start to populate your movie renders folder with the rendered images. By default, it renders into this folder, which is located in your Unreal Engine project folder under the saved folder and then movie renders. If you would like to know how to combine these rendered images into a final video output, I made a YouTube video on this as well. I will link it in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Good luck and I will see you in the next video.